What's up, everyone? Uh, it's been a minute since I posted my last video. Cannot even tell you when the last video I posted was or how long it's actually been. But um, I heard from a few people in which that the video thing is a good idea. Um, one of the things that Kim picks on me about is that I, uh, I'm a very talkative person. I like to I like to talk, I like to give details. And a lot of times, you know, I feel like I may be overburdened Kim with information on like what it is that I do. So I guess this is a way for me to be able to like get everything out and like tell people. But at the same time, like I don't want to keep telling the same story over and over. Like, you know, see my parents ask me about something and I tell them a story and I'll tell them like everything. And then like I might tell like, you know, Kim's parents about something and then I might forget something. And then like Morgan might ask about something and I'll forget something else just because it'll get to the point. To where like I've told this story so many times, I just don't want to tell it anymore. So I just gradually trail off with details. So this is a way to just get everything out. And uh, if you hear anything in this in the stories that interest you in any of the videos, and you want to ask me about it, you know more details about it or anything like that, feel free to hit me up and let me know. Um, I'm always down to to tell you more in case for some reason I lack a detail. But um, so. I'm working right now to uh, to get through all the programs and everything to be able to piece together the the Rome trip with the pictures and videos, all the pictures and videos that I took from that. And to be honest, the Rome trip is going to be like a, a three part video. Um, I'm not even sure how long that's going to take or when I'm going to because I, I just like I have like 143 uh, pictures and videos. Like it's one big folder, so and then like I have pictures from the the trip to Milan when I went to the Inter Milan Juventus game, and that was like up in the 50s and 60s of like pictures and videos, and uh, this actually is probably the shortest of the videos. Um, so after the uh, after the Rome trip when I went there for the four day weekend for my birthday, um, I went to I went to the Vicenza game. Because that was like their last, uh, it was like their last home game, I believe, for the season. Or maybe it was like, I actually think the interim, the weekend I went to Milan was the last home game. So like the last available game that I was going to be able to get to for this season. Um, and I went to it and to be completely honest, I'm not even sure right now. I'm just gonna pause this. I'll be right back. And we're back. So uh, I know I should have been more prepared for this. I thought I was. The piece of paper that I have actually up next to the computer um, doesn't have all the information that I thought it had. It was the wrong one. So um, anyway, I found the one that I needed. So like I said, as you can see, you know, you'll see with the other the other videos once I finally post them and get them figured out that. Uh, you know, I'm wearing a soccer jersey from the, the team that played. I'm obviously not wearing a Vicenza jersey because I don't own one yet. Um, no, but I, uh, oh, that day I uh, actually, it was an interesting day actually. Like I said, it was the last home game that I was going to be able to get to, and it was against, um, you know what? Let's let's like let Google Translate do this because if I try to pronounce it one more time, I'm gonna screw it up. I don't want the fans of that team to see them trying to pronounce their P O R D E N O N E and Pordenone. So it was a Vicenza against Pordenone, um, a Serie C game. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Serie C is like the equivalent of, if we're going to compare it to like college football, it's like the equivalent of Division III. Um, there's Serie A and Serie, I don't even, Serie B and then Serie C. So uh, that's usually for the teams that aren't as good because when you are in the, the top league and if you're finished towards the bottom you get relegated to a lower class and if you continue to lose you get relegated relegated to a lower class and so here we are series c 
or AKA Division Three football within the, the college football system. Um, like I said, I, I definitely have been keeping track of what was going on with Vincenzo's team, like since I got here, before I got here, and you know, see how good their team was, and it was a lot of losses and a lot of L's. So I, I fully went to this game not expecting to have you know that much fun or anything. Not to, I expected not to see really good uh, soccer being played, and it was all of the exact opposite. Uh, I wouldn't say it's probably a top game I've ever been to, but um, it was a lot of fun, especially, you know, considering I was by myself for it. Um, it was, th there were goals scored, so there's that. But um, like I said, so I ended up at the last minute deciding, because it was raining that day. Uh, it was kind of nasty outside, and I, you know I, there were a handful of times where I just thought about not going at all. But I was like, you know, what if you don't get to go to one next season? What if you don't get to go to one the entire time you're here? You know, I was like, just go, man, just go. So I uh, I went to the stadium, and it was a relatively easy stadium to find. It's uh, not all that big. I mean, I've I've seen. I've seen high school football stadiums bigger than the stadium that they play in, which uh, you'll see a picture. I'm sure I can upload it like over my talking right now and give you like an idea of what it looks like. But um, I mean, it was a relatively decent sized stadium. So I uh, I got to the stadium actually, and I, I finally found. I actually took the bus down there. I'm sorry, I didn't park. I took the bus down there because I didn't know where I would be able to park. So. I got on the bus, I went down there, and I started to make my way towards the stadium, sort of like walking around, and I uh, also, and they it was wearing a Juventus jersey for this game, Juventus wasn't even playing, they were playing that day, just not in this stadium, and I was getting some kind of funny looks, I mean, but you know how I am, like, I just, I'll, if my, even if my team is not playing, I'm gonna wear a jersey, and there's nothing you can do about it, I'm just gonna, just let me be, um, but uh, so I started to head towards the stadium. And I forgot off the bus. I was like following the path that like Google Maps was sending me, and I saw that like Google Maps was trying like they're trying to send me like this way, and like there was like a shortcut this way to get to the stadium. I was like, I'm gonna take the shortcut. Like, so I took the shortcut, and I ended up walking up on a, a security guard, and the security guard was like, "What are you looking for?" I was like, "Well, I'm trying to get to the ticket office," and he was like, "Are you a fan of the away team or the home team?" I'm not a fan of the away team. I don't even know who they are. And he's like, all right, well, this, like, this, the, the whole road was, like, blockaded at this point. He was like, this section of the road, this area of the stadium is for the away team. So, like, he was like, you need to go down this side street, take a left, walk down, and then you'll walk up on the ticket office right there. And I was like, man, like, it's wild the differences between, like, European soccer and like football in America where people just like you know you park wherever hang out wherever go into a gate wherever like so I started making my way towards the gate and I uh, I walked up and the way there the guy walked me into the ticket office where I saw like you know scarves t-shirts jerseys stuff like that hanging all over the walls I guess it was also like the gift shop too so I walked in there, I got my ticket or whatever, and when I was talking to the lady, the lady was like, well, how much are you looking to spend? I was like, well, you know, what's the cheapest ticket you got? Because I was just going to go in, like, sit towards the top of my, my own business, hang out with my headphones in, but not listen to anything, and, like, just keep it myself. But I, um, I ended up, she was like, well, you can get one for, for five euro. And I was like, oh, well, that sounds like a decent price. Like, uh, five euro, yes. And she was like, the only thing, though, is that that's where the ultras sit. And for those of you who don't know, the ultras are their word for the hooligans. And I immediately thought to myself, I'm in a Juventus jersey right now. Probably sitting with the ultras um, is not ideal because I don't speak their language. I don't know any of their players, their teams. I'm not trying to set anybody off. I'm not... You'll understand a little bit more. Like, the Rome trip had me shook. You'll understand more on that story later uh, when I'm able to get to tell it. But so she was like, well, there's a, there's like a 
covered section for like 20 euro. I was like, yeah, let's, I was like, the weather's messy out. Let's, let's do that. So she got me that for like 20 euro, which wasn't that bad. So I walked in, I started looking around. I was like, this is not as easily worded as, uh, that's trying to find your seats in America. Like any, any stadium, arena, venue, ballpark. There's like, here, I, I can show you a ticket right here, actually. This is the ticket. And I was like, I don't know what I'm looking for. And I don't know what TD1 is. I don't see any words anywhere that say TD1. I'm guessing. And then it turns out that the like that's row 19 and that's seat 62. So I um I just walked up to a guy and I was like, Where's where where can you point me in the direction I'm supposed to be? And he was like, Yeah, he's like, you need to go up here and hang a right and then go up towards the security guards. Like when you get up to the security guards, that's like where your seats are. I was like, sketchy. So I went and got a drink first. And after I like walked in, like this little kid, he had to be like five or six years old, like saw me in the Juventus jersey. And he like ran up to me and like looked up and was like, cheap, cheap. And I was just like, see, like, uh, what do you want me to say, man? Like, uh, and then the, the the guy's dad was like off like buying drinks for uh, his other son and like food for them or whatever. And then, like, he finally bought it and, like, walked off. And I was like, Phew. I don't know what I was supposed to say there. But, um, so I finally got in my seat or whatever. And, uh, the game started. And the game, when it started, actually, Vicenza was I th clearly, like, I think they were the better team. Um, I don't think standing-wise they were. But on this day, I thought they were. Um, they, they definitely pushed, uh, quickly in the game. And in the 20th minute, they actually put up a, a goal. Uh, Nicola Ferrari scored the goal for Vincenzo. And I was like, well, that took 20 minutes. Like, and they, like, they're, like, holding possession really well. Like, they, you know, they might be on to something today. They might get that. Because I think, like, before this game, it had been, like, eight matches since they had a win. You know, they had a bunch of losses and draws. So I was like, they might get a win today. Like, look at me being a good luck charm. Eight minutes later, um, David Bianchi ended up going for a sliding tackle to where he went for the slide tackle about the same time as the other team's player who had the ball. He switched feet. So when he went to go dive, like let's just call it like his left foot, he went to go slide tackle his left foot, do transfer the ball to his right foot, and then got his left foot taken out. And it just like it looked worse than it really was, but dude ended up getting a red card anyway. Um I think it was from what I looked up after the game, he had a yellow card coming into that game already from like the last game or whatever. I, I forget how the rules were for like yellow cards and like when you get an automatic red. Um I think he had a prior yellow card. But like I said, the, the, the tackle was debatable. And there was, you know, after that happened, it's like, ah, uh, you know, all right, it's whatever. Like, they're down, you know, 10 men. So they kept going, and all of a sudden, like, you could slowly, like, feel the momentum shifting. And it was one of those things where, like, the more the game went on, the more the refs try to control the game. And I, I don't want to be one of those people. I, I, but it really felt like on this day that the refs were in favor of the opposing team because it just seemed like they were letting the opposing team, Porto de None, get away with a lot, and Vicenzo was getting called for, like, everything. Everything. Dude kept blowing the whistle for no, like, the dumbest reasons. Like, breathe on a guy. Whistle. Like, I, I'll get you a yellow card, man. I like, don't. But, um... So the game continued, and then uh, right before half, like the referees were like getting the freaking business from uh, from the fans. Like all the fans were like in their seats still, like standing up, like yelling at the referees, letting them. I don't know what they were saying. They had some like chants going on. That I think were like the Italian version of like asshole, but I'm not really sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, but then. So again, Vicenza scored in the 20th minute, and then after half, it took Porto Danone until the 68th minute 
being up a man to score a goal. Um, the goal they scored was, oh, it was beautiful, though, because dude was coming up the right wing and ended up crossing the ball towards the center, and right as he crossed it, this one guy at the top of the box pretended like he was about to go strike it, let the ball roll between his legs, so everyone's focused on this guy, ignore that the ball kept rolling, and then a secondary teammate, like five or so feet, um, passed him, come up and just struck the ball, and like it, it barely got past the uh, the goalie's outstretched fingertips, and um, and that was when they got their first goal. Um, and after that, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, all right, like you guys have been up a man, and it was to be expected, but like if you can't score a goal up a man, it's kind of a problem. But Vicenza definitely had their chances. Um, they definitely had their chances plenty of times, the the most memorable being. And you know what? I'll just insert the video right here, and then you can just – I'm sure a lot of you have seen it already. If you follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. But I'll show you the video right here, and you can just see it for yourself. That happened, and it was one of those things where as soon as he stepped up, I was like, yo, penalty. These things are, like, automatic in soccer. Like, especially with, like, these guys, like, this is automatic. And then that entire play progressed like it did, and I was like, man, we take the guys like Ronaldo and Messi and Lewandowski and Mueller and, you know, Neymar, all of those guys, all of them for granted. Like, they made it look so easy. It's not even fair. But um, at one point in the game, too, like, it got so out of hand with the referees that, like, one of the coaches got ejected because he was, like, debating one of the calls that was made. Um, and then even after he missed that goal, the, the penalty kick, after he missed it, like, some of the fans just started rolling out. They're like, we've seen enough. Like, we know how this game we, – we know how this story ends because, you know, we've been here the entire season. Um, it got to, a, I don't, I'm not sure how this happened or if they like knew each other or what was going on, but like there was even one point in the game in like the 88th minute or something like that where like the coach turned around and was like arguing with one of the fans in the stands. Like the head coach of Vicenza turned around and was like yelling at a dude in the stands. And I, and I was like looking down on it and I was like, well, that's new. Um, other than that, the, uh. There's a couple of substitutions that game. I think the most notable was when um, number 10, Stefano Giacomelli, guessing. I have that written down. Not 100% on the pronunciation. But he was like, he was like a bundle of energy like the entire game. Uh, he was all over the place, especially with him being, you know, down to 10 men. He was like all over the place, just like getting it in. I was like, this guy has some energy. Like, he has passion. He obviously cares. Like, dude is getting it in. Um, he came off, like, the 80th minute or something like that. Like, 75th. I don't, he didn't play the entire game. But um, they brought some more guys in, two guys in, um, to see if they could get some more, some more energy out of the team to try to get the other goal, to try to get their three points. But the, uh, the game ended up being a draw. And then after the game was over, I ended up, like, walking out of the stadium. You know, I had my headphones in and whatever. And, like, with the frustration that the fans were feeling with uh, the referees and, like, another draw, um, I was getting a lot of nasty looks for the Juventus jersey, especially with the drunk ultras that were walking out of the stadium. Because to get to the bus stop, like, I had to walk past the section of the stadium where the ultras walk out. And it was just, like, groups of, like, three and four guys at a time just, like, walking by. And I'm not talking about, like, 20, 25, 30-year-old guys only. There were some, like, 50, 60-year-old guys, like, walking out and just, like, me mugging me. And I don't mean, like, they could have been looking somewhere. I'm, I'm talking about, like, 
as I'm walking past them, they would stop walking and like they just stop and would just watch me pass and like turn their body towards me and everything. And I was like, this is not one of my better ideas. Um, I need to get out of this situation and quickly. So um, no one said anything to me, which was which was nice. Even if they did, I don't know what they would have said. I wouldn't have even responded because, you know, four versus one, three versus one, the odds were not in my favor. Um, so I would have kept my mouth shut that time. But um, after that, I went and got some pizza, went and got some wine, an entire whole pizza. I think I have a picture of it. If I have a picture of it, I'll post it and so you can see, like, what the meal was. But, um... Like I said, so that was my first experience with uh, with going to a Vicenza game. I definitely look forward to going to more. I definitely look forward to taking Kim and the kids with me um, and going to some more later on. Hopefully, you know, we'll see some progress, some more wins next season. But, you know, you're paying five euro for a ticket. You know, what? It's not like you're a Browns fan or anything where you're paying hundreds of dollars, you know, per game and, you know, in the last – three years you've seen your team go 0 and 16 well well they have one season where they had one win so one win in three seasons i mean you know but um anyway hope you enjoyed this little little story tom um again i'm trying to learn everything in terms of like making this all work making it all happen um and then once i get that like i said i'll start posting a little bit more in terms of the adventures I go on when I go on them um, to try to get the, the stories out there and then we'll just continue on from there so I hope to hear from you guys soon hope you enjoyed this and ciao